if I told you that there was currently a genocide happening against trans people, one with such severity that it could be reasonably compared to the Holocaust? What if I told you that Britain's National Health Service was explicitly complicit in the deaths of hundreds of trans people, and many more trans people are threatening to flee the UK because of articles they have seen in the media that they disagree with? Or what if I compared the views of middle-aged women to that being held by the Third Reich? You would probably think that I was insane, that I completely lost it, that these are unreasonable positions for anyone to hold. But as a viewer of my channel, you know that I'm going to mention that these are views that are held in the trans community, and quite widely so. But I can sense there's going to be a few people swooping in, like Spider-Man, just to tell me, no, 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 these aren't common views. These are, these are going to be fringe at best. You know, these are just going to be anonymous Twitter accounts. How do you know that they're even trans? How do you know that they're LGBT allies? What if they're just turfs in disguise? But all the comments that I read out to you are not unknown people. These are all figureheads, self-appointed or otherwise, of the LGBTQIA++ community. And they are all very eager to spread fear in whatever way they can. There is a genocide against black transgender women happening, says Ariad Said. Now, she is a trans activist and she is commenting on the amount of deaths in America of trans women every year without actually going into any of the details as to who are committing these murders, why they might be happening, just a simple blanket statement of genocide. We then have Joey Soloway, a non-binary director, explicitly saying trans people are in the middle of a holocaust. Now, Soloway is actually a director associated with Netflix and made this comment after Dave Chappelle's wildly controversial special that aired just a couple of months ago. Then you have self-appointed empress of trans people, Abigail Fawn, also known as Philosophy Tube, claiming that trans people are being killed by the NHS. Then you have Nancy Kelly, the chief executive of Stonewall, claiming that trans people are fleeing the country. Now, I hear a lot from uh, the more kind of wild trans activist types about wanting to flee the UK but they never really do so. It's certainly a common viewpoint, and we'll kind of go into why that might be in a moment, and it's kind of the theme of this video. And as for women being compared to Adolf Hitler and the like, well, you know, we can just pull up this comment by India Willoughby, basically comparing JK Rowling to Hitler, but, you know, this is such a high-status opinion nowadays that you can pick your favourite trans activist, and they will have made this comparison to someone, at least one person. The shocking thing about these claims is that they are relatively mainstream within the trans community. These are no longer comments that you would just see spoused by anonymous Twitter users or on Tumblr, but... These are people, self-appointed or otherwise, but they're the ones that are featured in the media, they're the ones who are being interviewed, and they're the ones that are pushing this message to thousands of trans people, whether they've just come out or whether they've been living as their gender for years, that we are living in a nightmare world where you're just one step away from being murdered, where you're going to be having all of your rights stripped away from you by a group of middle-aged women, mostly, who don't really have the same institutional power that you have. Now, one of the really strange things about this narrative is that it really doesn't reflect the reality which we see every single day. There has never really been a better time in human history to be a trans person. We now have all the rights that we really need. There's nothing else that we particularly have to fight for here. We, if you want to have any kind of representation in the media, it's certainly more positive than it was, say, a decade ago. But the only time you would really see a trans person is if it was some sort of like sex change hospital or something like My Transsexual Summer, which is all just about, look at the trannies, look at them, point, point and look. Whereas now, you know, if you want to be a non-binary war criminal fighting for Ronald Reagan during the Cold War, you know, have at it. If you want, like, 
Hell, the way in the way in which you even see stories about an operator for Battlefield 2042 being non-binary with taglines like, well, it's about time. Nobody 10 years ago even knew what non-binary was. That is a massive sign of progress, and you would think a lot of these people would celebrate it. Interestingly, they never do. So why is all of this happening? Well, as I mentioned earlier, there isn't really a lot for rights that we need to fight for anymore. And the things that trans activists do try and push as rights. So for example, you you know, you want to compete in sports. Like being able to compete as a woman in the Olympics is not really a human right. You you're not entitled to do that. But that's barely anything. So they have to push this idea of there's still things we have to fight for. We still have to live in fear because a lot of these people really, they want power. There isn't really anything else trans people need to do in society. So we, you know, we can just have fun, uh, you know, watching cats or seals, or we could, you know, get a job or, or just live a normal life. But Places like Stonewall don't really benefit from that. And as for big name activist types like Paris Lees or uh, Philosophy Tube, like they wouldn't be having the same kind of attention if they didn't push out the angle that actually they are a victim and that they are being oppressed. You know, they, they have such a struggle every day of their life, even if they've only come out just a couple of months ago and really don't understand anything about the trans experience because they haven't lived it. You know, interestingly, lived experience used to be a thing until people like Philosophy Tube came out. But I digress. The idea is we've seen a lot of people trying to push this fear narrative just as a way of boosting themselves. They, a lot of them will believe it themselves that they are, you know, at the cusp of extinction. But that's, again, that's not really what's happening. But they want to give you the idea that that is so. You pay attention to them. So you give them money. So they get power. And that's not something which is exclusive to the trans community by any means. One of the biggest flaws of any kind of identity politics movement is that they really have to have that need to be a victim. You need to have that us v them mentality. Otherwise, nobody cares. And so this, a lot of these critiques that I have against the way the trans community operates aren't just about trans people or anything like that. It's, it can be applied to any kind of progressive movement. Any kind of movement about identity, they all act in the same way. And the thing is, this is a huge problem because it gives out this image to everyone, whether they are trans or not, that we are all in danger. It makes us seem really whiny and annoying to the average cishet person. I mean, hell, think about it. It's, things are apparently so bad for trans people that if you complain about a comedy special or a writer saying something that you don't quite like, it becomes front page news for weeks and weeks and weeks on end. And all of it seems to be in your favour. You eventually get people fired from their jobs and, you know, you don't have to have any repercussions. So to a lot of people, all of this just comes across as whining and bitching and does make us all look bad. But a bigger problem is that this is also giving a false message to people who are relatively vulnerable. When you first come out as being trans, things are difficult. You've got to worry about the way in which your friends and family will react to it, whether or not you'll even be able to get a job, how you're going to be treated by everyone else. And from my transition, bear in mind, I transitioned 10 years ago when it was a completely different landscape. I have not had anywhere near the same horror stories that you keep on hearing from these types day in, day out. And that is the same for virtually every single trans person I know. It's very convenient that these people who just seem to be constantly getting death threats, constantly being hurled abuse in the street, but they all just so happen to be activists and they all just so happen to have something to gain from pushing that message, whether it's money or notoriety. It's a little bit interesting that that always happens, isn't it? So you have these people who are nervous, who, you know, they, they might not know how they're going to be treated and they're just instantly met with this wall of horror that it's never been worse, that you're, you know, you, you, people are planning on fleeing because it's all so bad. And how do you think that makes these vulnerable people feel? Like a lot of them are going to be scared. And guess where they all end up? Well, they end up going into these queer echo chambers where they keep on being reinforced that everything is bad, everything is awful, and they end up becoming radicalised. And what's dangerous with this form of radicalization when you have a group of people, admittedly a fairly small group of people, 
and you're telling them that they have an existential threat against them. Well, if things are so bad, eventually they're going to take extreme measures. And we already see things like this in practice. So let's take, for example, JK Rowling being doxxed a couple of weeks ago. How many trans activists spoke out against it? Well, none. I mean, you had a comment from ContraPoints condemning it, but she was very quick to delete it because of the amount of flack that she got. Doxing someone is an extreme tactic. Turning up to their house is an extreme tactic. But that was thoroughly supported. It was thoroughly supported by these people. That is fine. The message that they put out is it is fine to target and dox the people you disagree with. If you want to get someone fired, you can use whatever tactics you want because there's no bad tactics, only bad targets. Or even when it comes to things like assault, a couple of years ago where you had a trans activist assault a gender critical feminist at Speaker's Corner, you had the NUS actually speaking out in support of the assailant. When you push extreme narratives, people act in an extreme way. And eventually we're going to reach the point where someone does something really dangerous and really stupid. And because so many people within the trans community are convinced that they're in a life or death situation, they're probably not going to condemn it. They will find any reason, any excuse that they can to say, actually, this was fine. It's okay when we act in this way. But they're the ones that are spreading the fear. They regularly talk about a high suicide rate within the trans community, but have they thought about how that might be impacted by the message that they put out? One which reality just does not reflect? Things have never been better to be a trans person. It's never been more comfortable. A lot of these activists get their own way in any space they possibly can. And they know that. And yet, they still are convinced that they are about to be wiped off the face of the earth. It's insane. And really, this is the kind of thing that you have to speak out against and fight back against it. These people are gaining more and more institutional power. They are able to get away with things that years ago would seem utterly insane for them to even do. And it points a bad image to people who are just coming out as being trans. And that in itself, <laughs> it should be unforgivable. They need to be more realistic if they want to actually be taken seriously as people. When you make comparisons between J.K. Rowling and Adolf Hitler, when Dave Chappelle makes a joke and you say, well, this is just like the Holocaust. You know, how can you expect people to ever take you seriously? And for the vulnerable people who you sweep up all the time, eventually they are going to be radicalised and it is all on you. Well, thanks for tuning into this video. I apologise that this came out late. It was supposed to be out last week, um, but that didn't happen, so it's, it's out now. Uh, seal of approval will be on tomorrow. As always, please like and subscribe this video because it will really help me out due to my break. Um, but thank you all once again for watching and I'll see you all next time.